assembly time. The gray Hoverman single bay antenna. Got my aluminum prepared. Here's the element we created in the last segment. My insulators are ready. The holes are drilled. We're good to go. Now to start. The first thing I do here is attach the insulator. I get it started so that I have some sticking out. Get that in my hole and start screwing it down. Now it's a sheet metal screw going into sheet metal. You want it tight. Don't use a drill. Use your muscle. Because it is a sheet metal screw going into sheet metal basically and you can strip it. Get it tight. Line it up. And then you do all three. There's three. Number two. Bring it out a little. That way you can find the hole. It's easier to adjust. But you have to really put a grip on the screwdriver. It's doing a good job of tightening down, trust me. There we go, I'm going to tell you. And line it up. So that's the insulators. They're very easy. It's just you have to muscle them on. I don't like to use a drill if I don't have to. Because you have a tendency to strip out the screw or strip out the hole you're trying to screw into. I'd rather just put a little muscle on it. Now for the element. I take a large washer. I lay that down where it goes. Take a, these are number 10 screws. 10 by 3 quarter and uh, in the center starting in the center I put a small washer on my on my number 10 screw get it started straight and just screw it down Don't go all the way. Just get it tight so it stays in place. But you want it to move around a little bit. Same for the next. This is the uh, bottom. Ah. Take your screw. Don't drop it on the floor. Put a smaller washer through your little loop we made. And screw it down. Once again, not all the way. So you have to make a few adjustments. And uh, you don't want to be screwing this in and unscrewing it. You just want it there. Okay. Now before we tighten everything down, I have a section of wire and I know it's a right angle, I just checked it. And I want to lay this in here and just check my angles. They're all fairly accurate. If you measured properly from point to point to point and made your bends properly, you're going to come up without have, having to worry about whether you're getting your angles correct because they will be correct automatically. This comes out right. Sometimes you want to, you want these all to be in a nice even plane. 
all the way up and down. Well, I'll try to explain that later. Once you have this set, your angles are straight. You need to adjust a little bit on the bottom. Don't get too fancy because you're not finished. And the more you move it around, the more they get bent. And you have to keep adjusting. Now for the other side. Take your time. You're not in a rush. Just screw them down fairly tight. And you check. Looks good to me. is off by a hair and there we have it very simple so that was easy you just screw them together check your angles are proper and uh, you tighten it down So here's the Hoverman, all put together as far as the main element goes. We have the outriggers, the nice angles, making a nice box there. Uh, what I wanted to say is we look down here and we want everything to be in a nice even plane. Uh, it's hard to see with the, with the camera, but you want everything lined up nice and evenly along a nice plane. That way it picks up the signals evenly. For the outriggers, these guys, this part is the outrigger. That's basically parallel to the bottom of the insulator more or less when this antenna can be mounted right now but it's going to go on a reflector and I'll show you how to make a reflector and how to mount it and when you get this all put up you do your final adjustments so far now I've tightened down all my all my screws so that everything is nice and tight and if I make any slight bends or slight adjustments in the copper, it should stay tight. Now, you don't go bending with a, a pliers or anything. You just use your fingers and gently bend things. You don't want to break your copper. You don't want to hurt what you just did. And we're good to go. I mean, this could be put up now. But where I live here, I need a reflector, and a lot of people do. That makes it directional. If I were to take and put this up now, it would be bi-directional or multi-directional, actually. Um, and it would receive signals from front, back, slightly out to both sides. And uh, it's a very strong antenna. Here is a finished Hoverman attached to the reflector. Here's the reflector grid. I'll explain that in a future video, 
how it attaches. Here's where we had the the holes, the, the quarter inch holes drilled for attachment to the reflector. And the, there's a reflector backbone here that has to be built. And it this increases the gain by nearly 15 decibels. I mean, it really makes this one powerful antenna. See the next video. You can see here how that looped bend for attachment holds very, very well. The screws sit nice and flat. The washers sit flat. You get good holding power because, believe it or not, these do vibrate in the wind. And I've had copper work itself loose. And you get it in there under the screws, under the washers. Whoa, focus here. Focus. Focus, focus. And it holds it tight. It'll hold it tight forever. Or until something better comes along.